I'm Ellen and this is Aidan and we're from the Digital Ninjas project at the Community School of Oxfordardo and we're here with Sandy Jones today. So Sandy we know that you are the Chief Executive of the PGA, can you tell us a bit about your job and how you're involved in the Ryder Cup? Mm -hmm, I can. Uh, I'm Chief Executive for the British PGA which covers Ireland as well so it's the PGA of Great Britain and Ireland and that was founded back in 1901 so it was the original Professional Golfers Association. And the reason it was formed was because in those days there was a big growth in the game. Uh, in the previous 25 years there had been 1,200 courses built in the UK. And prior to that it had only been 40. So suddenly there was a need for a profession and an industry. So that's why it was formed. So my job then really is, is just growing from that. That was formed to, to uh, help the professionals educate each other, to help them grow their jobs, to help them become better players and grow the game. Uh, and to look after each other through the room of benevolence. So that, and today that's the things we still do. We have a huge education programme, which we've now got 7,500 members. We only had 50 when we started. Uh, and we're across 60 countries in the world. So education, playing, uh, growing the game, and the growing the game and the playing of the game is what the Ryder Cup's all about. Although it didn't come along, as you know, to 1927. Um, well, what does the Ryder Cup mean to you? Well, it means a lot to me because I've been involved in it for a long time. Uh, this will be, when we get to Glen Eagles, it will be my 15th Ryder Cup. Uh, and it's, it means a lot because it promotes the game and it's, it helps to grow the game around the world, even though it's now Europe and America. In the early days, when Sam Ryder gave us the trophy, it was only the British and Irish pros that played in it. And now it's all the countries across Europe. So it's the one thing in sport or in business or in politics that actually unites all of Europe. All the countries play under one flag. It's the only sport that plays under the European flag. And that's amazing when you take all these cultures from different countries and people who sometimes don't like each other suddenly do like each other because of golf. So I think that's, that's fantastic. And uh, as I say, I started my first Ryder Cup was back in 1981 because I just joined the staff. I wasn't chief as that. And I was looking after the car parts in those days, which wasn't a great job considering it rained all week. And, uh, and then in 85 I became a referee, so I refereed the matches, and then I became in 91 the chief executive. So I have a major responsibility to ensure the matches play well, look good, and are successful. And uh, so I've been very lucky to be able to do that. So it means, means the world to me. There's never a day in my life I don't think about it. Uh, and I think that's, uh, and I pr probably never be a day the rest of my life, even when I retire, I don't think about it. So. And Scotland's particularly important to me because it's my home, so it's, it's a wonderful experience. So what first got you really started into the whole golfing scene and what, got, what was the first thing that really got you into golf? What got me into golf was my mother, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, my dad didn't play golf at all. He was into football and I won't tell you which football club he supported. <laughs> but, uh, my, uh, so my mother was a golfer and she used to take me out as a child on the golf course. Uh, and wouldn't let me play off the back tees because the course was too big for me. So she would drop the ball somewhere like 80 yards from the green and make me play from there. And then as you got older, I would be about seven or eight years of age, I guess. As you got older, she allowed you to come back until we got back to the ladies tees. And at 12 years of age, I wasn't going to play with my mother off the ladies tees. It's not something you wanted to be seen doing. So uh, we fell out at that point and we, she banned me from playing for a month, which wasn't a good thing either. So it taught me not to laugh with my mother again. That was for sure. <laughs> And, uh, and then from that I just got a bit, became a better player and because I lived in the little village of Garkosh, which isn't so far from here, uh, yeah, I knew everybody in the village and everybody played, the, the school teachers played, the headmaster played, the policemen played, the baker played, everybody played. So you knew everybody in the village and for me that was great. And then I got involved in the golf club committee. Uh, just because I only lived sort of 800 yards from the course I think, so uh, that was local for me. And from there, I just got more and more involved and although when I left school, I went into being an engineer to start with and then a computer programmer with IBM back in the very early days of 80 column punch cards, which you will only see in the museum, you won't ever use them. Uh, but golf was my hobby and uh, in 1979 I got the chance to apply for a job with the PGA, which I did do and I was very fortunate to get that job and that was looking after the PGA in Scotland. So, and I did that through to 91, I was asked to become Chief Executive, so I've been really lucky that golf, my hobby, became my job, 
became my life and uh, I, I now consider I never have a job, but just have a way of life which someone pays me for. So that's a pretty lucky person.